First, I'm going to start by saying congratulations on the presentation. Thanks. Did you like it? Yeah, the, the IMAX laser looks unbelievable. Cool. It's, it's crazy. We're, we're so happy about the reaction. This is a serious investment that we've made. We've never put this kind of money into an R&D um, project, and you know, this, is, this is raising the bar. And you always hope we think it's incredible and a game changer, and the filmmakers that we talk to who have seen it feel the same way. But I know you follow our company really well and really closely, and it's nice when there's there's validation from other sources too, because again, we take this really seriously, so it's it's cool. Well, I think in the long run, though, um, you know, the cost of IMAX film prints is very expensive, and in the long run, I would like to think that the laser option minimizes the cost of film. You know what I mean? There's well, it, it does it does in a big way. With that said. It's a creative decision. So what we've done is we've given our filmmakers, because filmmakers drive our process, we have said to all of our filmmakers, you decide. You can shoot it in 2D laser, or 2D uh, digital, you can shoot it in 3D, you can shoot it in film, you cannot shoot it in IMAX and we'll convert it like we do most of the movies that we work on. But you get to decide how you want your movie to be presented. And this is just another kind of notch in the arsenal about something that we're able to deliver. Um, the, the presentation, obviously, as you saw, is glorious. And, and it, 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 it won't replace film, but it will take anything that's not film and take it to a level that it's never been at before. Well, I think the key secret of, of the presentation is that this is ultimately the greatest option for huge screen formats. Correct. This is, I mean, I've never seen brightness like that across the entire screen. Well, you'll, you'll see other, um, you know, we're not the only people doing laser, but we are the only people doing laser on screens 70, 80, 90 feet, 100 feet, sure. up to 120 feet in width. A lot of the, a lot of the other people who, who are doing it are doing it on 40 foot screens, and they're fine, but we don't have 40 foot screens. That's not what the IMAX presentation is about. We're about taking you into this giant, scopey location and a movie palace and letting you get lost in the middle of the story and in the middle of the characters and doing so the way we kind of grew up doing it. What's happened is that a lot of the screens are getting smaller and, and they're getting narrower and some of the magic of going to the movies has been lost and that's changing now which is great. The movies this year for instance, 2015 is off to an incredible year and the slate over the next two to three years looks to be exceptional. We have to deliver an experience that complements how amazing the slate is, and laser is a great way to do that. I definitely want to touch on the new IMAX 2D camera that you just announced. It's going to be on Captain America. Uh, for, pe for Talk a little bit about the resolution of this camera versus the resolution of your huge film camera. How does it compare and contrast? Um, the resolution is, uh, again, there's nothing to compare with film, especially the IMAX 2D film camera. Uh, this gets really, really, really close, and in fact, from a from a spec point of view, it might even be better in certain ways. Um, what it is is it is a a digital camera, which means um, it it can play forever, meaning you can keep it on 24/7. Whereas with our film cameras, it has magazines that are three minutes long. I'm not going to say one's better than the other because that's really not what we were talking about. We let the filmmaker decide. There's some filmmakers who think that digital is the only way to make movies. And then there's other filmmakers like Chris Nolan, who is our incredible partner, who feels that film is the optimal way. And we, are, we do not want to tell filmmakers how to make movies. So going back to your question, the 2D digital camera, the new one that we're doing with Ari, it's an amazing camera. It's the Alexa 65. It allows us to go full screen, top, bottom, left, right. It has resolution that's 4K and above. And, uh, and it also is digital, therefore it's on all the time. So we're gonna be able to do things and be a part of sequences that we weren't normally able to do. We also don't have to provide the film prints because it's, because it's digital. And the other thing that we're able to do is produce many more of them. One of the advantages of partnering with Ari is that they are constantly revising and upgrading their systems, which is what we want to be able to do. We take their system and then we put our IP into it, and it's kind of one plus one equals four. I'm very curious, how many of these cameras have you manufactured thus far? And is it one of these things where you foresee that you'll be able to get a hundred of these things made so everyone can use it? No, we, uh, we'll have enough to work on CAPS uh, 3, which starts shooting uh, 
in the next month or so. I heard, um, I heard April 27th. Yeah, okay, thank you. You're, you're, you're quicker than I am on it. I was trying to be coy. Right, no, I, uh, I'll throw down facts. Okay. Um, the, uh, we're not, we're not going to have 100. We don't want 100. We don't want every movie to shoot with IMAX camera. We've, we've had a supply demand issue, which is we're very selective about our cameras. We're going to continue to be very selective. We're not giving our cameras, whether they're film or digital, to anyone. We, we have a group of people who we've uh, worked with over a period of time, who we've spent time with and realized these guys get it. And those are the people who are going to use our cameras. But if someone walks in and says, I want to use your IMAX camera, we're not going to say, OK, here. These are definitely exclusive. There's definitely only so many of them. And we're going to be very, very careful and selective about who we give them to. Well, can you pin down a more specific number? You have a dozen of these cameras, or are they crazy expensive that you have to very limit what no, you're making? they're definitely expensive. My guess is when all is said and done, they'll be somewhere between 15 and 20. Okay. Which, and by the way, on each show, you probably need four. Sure. So we could be theoretically operating four to five at a time. I doubt we will, but we could be. When you would upgrade a camera like that, because I would imagine you'll be able to do upgrades, is it a firmware upgrade or is it a whole system upgrade? Uh, it depends. It depends on how big the changes are. So if it's adding on to an existing camera, it will be a smaller upgrade, but there will come a point in the next year or two. You know, digital cameras are changing on a six-month to 12-month cycle. So there will come a point where we'll take everything we have, throw it out, and add and come up with a completely new batch, which again is part of the reason why partnering with Ari was such a great idea. I love, I loved this presentation of laser, but I also love the look of film projection Me and, too. What, and what Nolan did with Dark Knight I agree. and Interstellar. It, it, it's just stunning. I agree. The look of film. I am. I'm curious. Has there ever been any talk of IMAX partnering up with a theater? And for like maybe somehow showing older IMAX films. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. Well, what can we do to make this happen? Just keep talking about it, and that's what we're doing. And you know, we've had we're at a very interesting foundational time at our company. We're about to go over our thousandth screen. We have our new 2D camera, digital camera. We had an incredible run with Interstellar. We have laser. We've accomplished over the course of the we have our new 12.0 immersive sound system over the last six months. We've nailed a bunch of, of, of touchstone um, sort of enhancements in all of the foundations, the pillars of our business. And you know, we, we are genetically predisposed to being to worrying. That's who and what we are. There's always a sense of, of urgency at our company. We never take for granted what we're up to. But we're at a point right now where we've kind of nailed a handful of pretty significant milestones. And so we are now at a point over the next two to three to four months where we're going to start looking at things like that. I'm not saying we're doing it, but we've talked about could there be a small circuit of in, in you know half a dozen big cities of IMAX theaters that only play those great classics that we DMR'd and, and either projected digitally or in laser or in film or all three. So it's something that we've explored, no promises, it's not our core business, but we do think like, so for instance, we have an IMAX theater at USC now at the film school. It's not open to the public, it's for film students. Sure. And that's part of what we want to do there is have them be able to see and play with the tools of IMAX on what the cycle is like from classics to new movies, from character studies to, to visually effective focused films and there could be an argument for doing that matter of fact because I, I, I agree with you what the film is I was raised on it uh, it will always be my favorite um, I recognize that it's not for it's not for everyone generationally but I always think there's a place for it and so it's something that I could imagine us doing I definitely have to ask about uh, the fact that film labs are going away film manufacturers are cutting down making film how does this play into Filmmakers like Nolan, who obviously, whatever he does next, which no one knows, he's obviously going to shoot some of it in IMAX. We already know this. This isn't like a maybe, considering the path he's on. But how does the lack of film labs and everything, do you foresee we're year, like a few years away from film possibly being gone? I hope not. We've done everything that we possibly can, like some of the other studios, and the other studios are bigger than us. We stepped up in a way that for our company was a, was a, a big um, a big step in terms of buying film for a period of time so we knew that it was there. Remember a lot of our museum theaters are still film based systems, projection systems that are going to stay that way for a while. So we remain committed to film but we're also practical and, and know which way on a mass level the world is headed. But we will, we will uh, 
protect film until the last second, we're just simply not able to anymore. But as a company, um, I never see us turning our back on film. Uh, in fact, we'll do the exact opposite. We'll kick and scream and fight for it because we really believe in it. Uh, obviously, you, you, you pushed forward with this laser projection, the new sound system. What, if I may be so bold to ask, what other challenges have you sort of now thrown down? Because obviously, it's always about invention. How do we get better? What do you think the next advance is in terms of a huge hurdle that maybe is in front of you that you want to overcome? Well, I don't know if it's necessarily a hurdle that's in front of us. It's really the unknown. You know, there are definitely new things that are happening. Virtual reality is something that's very much out there that we need to be a part of. Uh, people are, you know, young people. We have my wife and I have a 25, a 22, and a 20 year old. There is zero doubt that the consumption of content is different today than it was for them five years ago. There's a lot more on your phone, on your tablet, on your PC, at home, on the run, in your car, etc. So you know we're paying close attention to everything. Um, we have we've just hired an at-home executive, a very senior executive who came from a big studio, who's helping us with that. But when I say all that, and I'm looking straight into the camera, it's really important to remember our core business, our big, gigantic, iconic movie theaters that play movies made by Chris Nolan or J.J. Abrams or Jim Cameron or Zack Snyder. Sure. or Alfonso Cuaron, etc. Of the Marvel titles, that's who and what we are, that's how we make our living, that's where our passion is. Documentaries are very much the same thing. So while there are a lot of other things to worry about, I am a blocker and tackler. I pay, pay more focus and attention to our core business than than anything else, and that's where me as well as a lot of other people will do. And they, we also have this other group that's always about innovating. Uh, JJ told me that he filmed one sequence of episode seven in IMAX, and uh, so I have to ask you, how much do you, you you're a film geek, how, how much do, for you is it like, when JJ's talking to you about IMAX and Star Wars, are you like losing your shit when, when, when you're in those moments? Yeah, I mean, here I am in, shoot, in my suit and tie, but yes, I will talk about losing my shit. <laughs> I definitely am. First of all, JJ and I have been friends for a long time. He's done a lot of his movies in IMAX. We have a, a, a great relationship, not only professionally, but we're also friends. Um, and also his partner, Brian Burke, uh, who, who runs with him, Bad Robot. And also Tommy Harper, who just got uh, brought in there as the COO. Uh, Tommy was the guy who was the line producer extraordinaire on Mission Impossible and on Star Wars. So when we get together and we're able to talk about this stuff, it is, it is pretty cool. As someone who grew up in the 70s and 80s, to be working on Star Wars with IMAX cameras, with our friends at Lucas and, and Disney, and JJ and Berkey and Kathy Kennedy, like Kathy Kennedy, who's made like the greatest movies of all time, are making it. Come on. Uh, have to ask: Have you sat down with Ryan? And, oh yeah. Have you sat down with Ryan and Josh and the other filmmakers and started talking IMAX stuff? Because I would imagine that it's like almost a mandate from Disney: the importance of big screen, 3D. You know. Yeah, I mean, we just announced a new deal with Disney, which is uh, which is now 14 more movies. And so Gareth Evans, uh, Edwards, for instance, yeah. was doing the the, the standalone. Um, did Godzilla, which we were a part of. So all those conversations are ongoing. Nothing to announce yet, uh, but it's a it's a very solid partnership. Cool. I'm going to leave you there okay, and thanks, say man. thank you.